Manchester United just had a really comfortable and confident win against West Ham, who are actually above us in the league table. Now, if you look at the stats, it might look like West Ham were dominating us, like they had a lot of shots, and United luckily managed to win, but that's not true. West Ham barely had a shot on target, and even though the stats don't say that, Onana barely had to make a save. I remember there was only one proper save early on when uh, Onana had to make a deflected shot save, but other than that, Onana wasn't tested. Kudus was pocketed by Shaw. Kudus did more defensively than offensively, and even Bowen was kept quiet by Maguire and Martinez. Now, at the core of this win are the three youngsters who shine today, Hoyland, Garnacho and Minu. For Hoyland's goal, who actually had his birthday today, his 21st birthday, he scored a wonderful goal. Casemiro was very vital for that goal because he won that duel and got that interception. And Hoyland just did a drop of the shoulder, dribbled and shot from his weak foot. That is such a good shot that you wouldn't believe that it's from his weak, shot, uh, weak foot. Right? Because it's from outside the box, box and very quickly. Same with Garnacho. Garnacho is probably our best right winger at the club right now. Ahmad Diallo might be better, but we won't ever know because he doesn't get any game time. So, for Garnacho to score two goals, right? One right after, after the half time when we are usually asleep, but he scored. I know it's a deflection, but still, a goal is a goal. And then towards the end, again scoring a goal with a brilliant counter-attack. And like I said in my last video, McTominay is a great super sub. Don't play him as a starting eleven, but play him as a super sub and he will give you rewards. And he showed it again today. He did a br brilliant press, won the tackle, won the ball, put out a good assist and Ganacho finished the rest. And the third youngster, Kobe Menu. When you watch Kobe, right, he's only 18, but you won't ever guess that when you watch him play because he's just so calm and composed. When he plays, it feels like he slows the game down for a split second. And in that split second, he just opens up the space for a clear pass. We saw it so many times, he was surrounded by two or three West Ham players. But he had that presence of mind to just slow down the game for a split second to open up some space and deliver the ball out safely. We haven't had a player like that for years in a team. And it's really important to safeguard these three talents to not burn them out. Because yes, they are playing and contributing a lot. But we have to remember they are still teenagers and they need proper rest. For that, we need more transfers in the summer. We need defensive midfielders, attackers, you name it. These three players, Ganacho, Menu and Hoyland, are involved in the last eight goals scored out of nine for Manchester United. That shows how important they are. Hoyland is the youngest Manchester United player to score in four consecutive goals. So it just shows that if we build around these three, that we can have a successful team. But that depends on how serious Ineos is and if they can actually do transfers properly unlike the players who have been spending money and not getting any results. So even though it was a really good win, a confident win, you know, my worry after this game is Lissandro Martinez. We have all seen how important he is to, to the way we play and our play style. Whether it's passing out from the back or keeping a high line or Martinez just dribbling out of trouble. But when he got that injury from the, uh, the Kufal crash, I don't know why he was allowed back on the pitch. That's the doctor's fault. And he's a new head doctor, Od uh, O'Driscoll, I think. I don't know why did he allow Martinez to come back on the field. Because he allowed that, I think his injury got worse a few minutes later. In the post-match uh, conference when Ten Hag was asked about it, even he said that it's looking really bad. I am hoping that it's not an ACL or like a season-long injury because that's really bad for the team because just when we are gathering some form and confidence, one of our best players gets injured once again. I would really hope it's not the worst-case scenario with Martinez. If you're liking my content so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like button below. Now, 
another w- very underrated player who might have gone under the radar is Dalo. Dalo was really good in this game. I don't know if you noticed it, but throughout the match, he was consistently in the right places. And my biggest surprise was how he drifts in the midfield. That's common, right? But how far he drifts in. At some points, he was even further forward than Bruno. And he didn't get caught out, luckily, in this match. And more than that, he pocketed the right winger, whoever that was, of uh, left winger, I mean, of West Ham. And when Maguire had that blunder and Bowen was through on goal, 1v1, Dallow made a really good recovery sprint and that block, which might have saved the goal. So for me, Dallow was one of the contenders for match with the man. But of course, with three goals scored, I don't think he was ever going to get it. But I'm really happy with how he performed. Speaking of performing, Maguire. Even I was doubtful, like, why is Maguire playing instead of Varane? But to be fair to Maguire, he had a pretty good, good game. Outside of those two blenders, he played pretty well. I'm going to be fair to Maguire and say that maybe those two mistakes were because he's just coming back from injury and it's just his rustiness. But he did have some really good moments in the game where he put some good tackles and good passing. So, at a moment where Martinez is injured, might be injured, we are going to travel to Villa next week. And that's a worry because Villa have the best home form in the league currently. And for the top four race, where Villa are in the fourth place, this is a really important match. Emery has done a really good job. Since he has arrived there, winning, uh, I mean, getting into the, the seventh spot last uh, season, even after the Gerard blunder, and now keeping them in fourth with the best home record. So, when we are traveling there with Watkins of fire, on fire, I would like that if Martinez is not available, that Shaw should play at the left center back spot. I don't want Maguire, Varane, or Varane Evans partnership. I would prefer Varane and Shaw to play there. And to Delo to go at the left back. The problem with left back is Malasia is still injured. I don't know what's going on with him. He hasn't played whole season. He's still injured. Then we terminated the regular on loan for some reason. And we sent out Alvaro Fernandez to Benfica on loan. So at this moment, we are short on full backs. Even today, Van Bissaka wasn't on the sub bench. He might be ill or something. So for the Villa game, I hope we play Pisaka, Varan, Shaw, Dalo. Because if we play that back four, I believe we can get a similar performance to what we had with the West Ham team. That we will be able to keep a high line, pass the ball, stay composed. Because you have seen that as soon as our players come back in the last few games, that each and every person is passing the ball properly, tracking back, pressing and doing their job. There's no bullshit about it. So, for the Villa game, if we manage to win that, I think we might have a shot at the top four. Do you think that with the six points gap with the Spurs in fifth and Aston Villa next week, that we can get top four? Let me know in the comments down below. And in other news, Chelsea have lost 2-4 to Wolves with Cunha getting a hat-trick at Stafford Bridge. That's really embarrassing. And people were complaining at us Getting a 4-3 win, that is just Wolves, but they showed that they are a really good team. If you would like to see my reaction to that Wolves game, then click on this link right here. And I'll see you all in my next video next week. Goodbye.